A Detail by Stephen Crane Narrated by Mike Vendetti The tiny old lady in the black dress and curious little black bonnet had at first seemed alarmed at the sound made by her feet upon the stone pavements. But later she forgot about it, for she suddenly came into the tempest of the Sixth Avenue shopping district, where from the streams of people and vehicles went up a roar like that from headlong mountain torrents. She seemed then like a chip that catches, recoils, turns, and wheels, a reluctant thing in the clutch of the impetuous river. She hesitated, faltered, debated with herself. Frequently she seemed about to address people. Then, of a sudden, she would evidently lose her courage. Meanwhile, the torrent jostled her, swung her this and that way. At last, however, she saw two young women gazing in a shop window. They were well-dressed girls. They wore gowns with enormous sleeves that made them look like full-rigged ships with all sail set. They seemed to have plenty of time. They leisurely scanned the goods in the window. Other people had made the tiny old woman much afraid because, obviously, they were speeding to keep such tremendously important engagements. She went close to the girls and peered in at the same window. She watched them furtively for a time. Then finally she said, "'Excuse me?' The girls looked down at this old face with its two large eyes turned towards them. "'Excuse me, can you tell me where I can get any work?' For an instant the two girls stared. Then they seemed about to exchange a smile, but at the last moment they checked it. The tiny old lady's eyes were upon them. She was quaintly serious, silently expectant. She made one marvel that in that face the wrinkles showed no trace of experience, knowledge. They were simple little soft, innocent creases. As for a glance, it had the trustfulness of ignorance and the candor of babyhood. I want to get something to do because I need the money, she continued since, in their astonishment, they had not replied to her first question. Of course, I'm not strong, and I couldn't do very much, but I can sew well, and in a house where there was a good many men folks, I could do all the mending. Do you know any place where they would like me to come? The young women did then exchange a smile, but it was a subtle, tender smile, the edge of personal grief. Well, no, madam. Hesitantly said one of them, last, I don't think I know anyone. A shade passed over the tiny old lady's face, a shadow of the wing of disappointment. Don't you? she said, with a little struggle to be brave in her voice. Then the girl hastily continued, But if you will give me your address, I may find someone, and if I do, I will surely let you know of it. The tiny old lady dictated her address, bending over to watch the girl write on a visiting card with a little silver pencil. Then she said, Oh, thank you very much. She bowed to them, smiling, and went on down the avenue. As for the two girls, they walked to the curb and watched this aged figure, small and frail in its black gown and curious black bonnet. At last the crowd the innumerable wagons, intermingling and changing with uproar and riot, suddenly engulfed it. This has been a detail by Stephen Crane, narrated by Mike Vendetti. Production copyright 2024 by Mike Vendetti Productions. www.mikevendetti.com